are shifting gears and basically moving into high speed now as we are trying to do everything we can to get our economy, our um, private sector, our primary um, revenue streams, of course, that being hospitality, uh, back on track. And uh, news is coming out about the Local Employers Assistance Program, a very, very apropos uh, acronym saying LEAP. Let's all take this leap together. Let's get this thing done. So I brought some uh, people in the KOM News Zoom room right now across industries. Of course, our friend Mary Rhodes, the president of the Guam Hotel and Restaurant Association, someone who has her finger on basically all the pulses of hospitality, hotels, restaurants, what have you. Uh, somebody I used to work for way back in the days of Sprint, my good friend Jay Merrill, uh, who has now dedicated his life to understanding uh, market behavior, doing a lot of things with um, uh you know, product promotion and like things like that. Um, Jay doing a lot of studies and everything. Uh, market research, MR MRD, right, Jay? Yeah, that's correct, Jason. Market research and development. There you go. Uh, very good to see you as always. Uh, let's go down to Valley of the Laddie where our friend uh, John Uggen, Senor Uggen, uh, with Karadek uh, Carabao. Uh, good morning, Mr. Uggen. Buenas. Oops. Oh, you muted, sir. Uh, unmute, please. Hey, buenas, sir. Half a day. Thank you very much for joining us. And lastly, but certainly not leastly, uh, somebody who knows a thing or two about making uh, visitors to our island very happy and exhibiting the half a day spirit, uh, Steve Casperbauer. Uh, so, Steve, good morning. Good to see you as always. Good morning, everybody. And uh, thank you for inviting us onto your show. Absolutely. So, obviously, a very diverse panel. Um, people here with a lot of experience, like in this room already, people with. Um, uh, a common goal of trying to get Guam back on uh, the road to prosperity and everything. So we, we can just go around and feel free to riff off each other here. Uh, when you heard about the formulation of the local employers assistance program and everything like that, what are we looking at in terms of its effectiveness on scale, scope, organizational size, um, and who can benefit from this? Well, uh, maybe I can start. You know, it was only about a month ago that a, a small group of um, individuals who started with a, a base interest in the in the gap in the tourism industry that didn't really fall into one of the two programs, the restaurant revival program or the um, uh, shutter venue operators grant, which was for performing arts types of productions, which is basically mainly the tour attractions, et cetera, got together and said, uh, if this extension of uh, tourists not coming to Guam continues, then we're going to have to really be um, a team player to let, let the community know that we're going to need a little bit more funding. And so with that cause, you know, um, we worked together and, and uh, advocated with uh, the groups, whether it was Chamber or GHRA, or the legislature, um, chair of tourism, Amanda Shelton, with the governor's office. We wanted it to be one team, no scene, Team Guam, uh, because we know that our, our biggest industry is tourism and that we wanted to make sure that those of us who have our ears to the, to the uh, coconut railroad track can really uh, let people know where we're really at and what the expectations are. And so with that, it was, uh, um, ascertained also with uh, with a lot of research with uh, Jay Merrill, as well as that um, we will need another stimulus. And so the group got together to seek um, bipartisan, I'm not talking in the politics, but bipartisan amongst our businesses, uh, a way to, to all get together and agree that um, we need to make this a single focus program uh, to recommend uh, in concept. But the, uh, you know, the concept was, was taken by the administration and those who are <clears throat> also supporting the legislature and, uh, and turned it into the um, local employment assistance program, which was fantastic. And I just want to just say it's, it's really awesome to be on Guam. It's really awesome to have this community where we all can know and work together so quickly to uh, address the needs of the, you know, thousands of employees that are still waiting to get back into a job and keep those companies going so that when tourism opens up, which should be, you know, we maybe starting six months from now, I think we'll start to see a better trickle in. But during that time, we know that the, uh, the government and all of us are investing 
for a future that can bounce back quickly. So we want to say thank you for all of that. Oh, well, well, thanks for yeah, thanks for that, Stephen. That projection of of uh, hopefully tourism getting better in about six months. I know that's something that uh, many of your contemporaries in island hospitality have kind of like shared, like a rough estimate. Maybe late part of spring 2022, uh, we might start to see some of um, uh, some positive gains. So, uh, Jay, if I can go to you, um, you know, looking at the research that you've done in this, uh, of course, the the funding for this uh, draws down 25 million dollars from the American um, Rescue Plan Act. Um, is that enough um, to be able to adequately maintain and then hopefully increase um, employment numbers, seeing as how like many, many uh, businesses in this line of work and everything like that, payroll is always going to be like such a massive part um, of their cost layout? Well, that's a good start. Um, Jason, thanks very much for having us on. <clears throat> this initiative, you know, really started way back in, in 2020. And uh, it got started on the basis of attempting to do some things that were going to <clears throat> assist the island to recover. So there was a website called guamrecovery.com that was tilted up. And we went out and did an initial research of GVB, GVB's membership to us to try and get some sort of gauge on how difficult things really were for um, island tourism businesses and discovered it was pretty bad. Presented to the governor and she said, my goodness, um, we really need to see what the impact is going to be on the entire island. In, in other words, not just tourism businesses, but all businesses, as well as the community itself. So she was uh, very helpful in funding a, a project uh, between my company, Market Research and Development, and the University of Guam, where we went out and we surveyed residents and we surveyed businesses. And amongst the business survey, what we discovered was pretty shocking. We replicated a study that was done in 2017 by the um, U.S. Census Bureau. It's called the Economic Census. It's done every five years, and it was going to be some time before the next one came out. So we replicated that, and what we discovered was that revenues among private enterprise businesses, their overall revenue picture, had declined from 2017 to 2020 by 66 percent. So 66 percent of the revenue that would normally go in to fund things like gross receipts, taxes, payroll, benefits, uh, jobs uh, was gone. And then we discovered that the situation wasn't evenly felt across the island. In fact, uh, what we discovered was if we took the median of all businesses on the island, tourism businesses were hurt uh, by a factor of one third more. So of all of the businesses, business sectors that were impacted, tourism was hurt the most. And um, I'm a partner with Dave in the Valley of the Laddie, and what we've done is work a lot with our other partners, such as John, in helping uh, local entrepreneurs get started. And what we discovered in the survey, confirmed also in 2017, was that the business sector was, in the tourism sector, was made up largely of small firms. In fact, some 80% of them have less than 20 employees. So we knew that this was a very severe downturn. The impact was clearly in the tourism sector, and it was clearly hurting very small locally owned businesses because over three quarters of the businesses in that sector are actually owned by local people. So it was at that point that we decided that it was necessary to bring in some folks like Steve and other members of our team within the Japanese and Korean travel industry, Bo Baba from Atlantis and um, to begin thinking of ways in which we could try and uh, ameliorate problems, try and try and make it better. And what we decided was going to be needed was a program that was similar to what the federal government had tilted up, um, something on the lines of either the payroll protection plan or uh, the shutter venues opportunity grant program, something that would be in line with providing grants to help businesses through the period. But your question originally was, was this enough? And the fact is it probably won't be. Mm -hmm. But it is important to see what we can do to bridge the period of time where folks are right now experiencing tremendous hardship to when visitors can start to come back. Because at the moment, folks are simply unable to get any business at all. And in order for them to be ready to reopen, to provide services that our tourists are going to expect in order for Guam to deliver the experience that it's known for, which is our hallmark, our people, our experience, the things that 
people enjoy while they're here, we're going to have to have these businesses ready to go. And unless there's extraordinary assistance, that isn't going to happen. And I, now, that being the case, Jay and, and Mary, I'd, I'd like to ask you to jump in here as you see fit, but um, are we, is, is that funding that's being allowed, the $25 million from the ARP, is that predicated on businesses returning to, a, to full operational tempo and full operational capacity, like front of house, back of house, or are we, are we still kind of like assuming that companies will, at least for the next few months, continue to run lean? Actually, the, the governor has actually committed the $25 million. And today, uh, we, we've been doing kind of a petition for um, people to send their support letters and forms in um, so we could address the legislature when they do have the public hearing for the additional $25 million. Mm -hmm. So that due date is actually today because we're hoping that the senators, um, I know Senator Amanda Shelton was committed to having public hearing for the additional $25 million. Originally, the ask was for $75 million, uh, recognizing the number of businesses in the tourism industry. And so that's a clarification that it is intended to benefit all business sectors, right, including not just optional tours. It's also, you know, travel agents, transportation, um, hotels, restaurants. A lot of these businesses have received federal funding, as stated earlier, but it's, it's at a point where those federal dollars have already uh, been utilized and there needs to be more of a stimulus as you had stated. Um, so we're really hoping to combine the federal funding with the 25 million from the governor uh, through the ARC, but also to have local appropriation of another 25 million. Now, if we could also seek funding, like working with the congressman, uh, maybe Department of Interior, uh, you know, Economic Development Authority, uh, or EDC to really go after the additional 25 million. I think the intent here is to create kind of a, a bridge for these businesses to get through the next um, year, right? The next six, six months to a year. And so Gita has been very um, willing to have these conversations with them. And they actually helped, um, helped us get to the point um, with the governor to, to come up with the structure of what that $25 million would entail. And so uh, Gita is planning to have, I know that, um, you know, Director Mel Mendiola, she had mentioned already that she's gonna meet with the industry stakeholders. So every time Gita has pushed um, federal funding dollars towards private sector, uh, they have done a really good job in working with organizations like GHRA, the Guam Women's Chamber, the Guam Chamber of Commerce, um, and even the Guam Contractors Association. So we could really talk from an organization level to advocate on behalf of the different industries we represent. And so Gita is planning to have a, uh, industry stakeholder meetings to talk about the structure of this 25 million. But it, I, I believe the intent is there to get additional funding so that we can try to secure all of the $75 million. And it's really important, and I know I've been, you know, on the link many times talking about how we need to progress uh, forward and knowing what we're looking at in 2022, we need to really get this injection of stimulus funding into private sector, specifically for the tourism industry, because even though restrictions have been lifted uh, at a certain level for different businesses, um, a lot of these businesses, it just doesn't make sense for them to open up because majority of their revenue comes from tourists. And, you know, with a population of 170,000 people here on Guam, both local and military residents, um, it, it's not going to garner the revenues that, um, you know, to make up the losses of tourists, right? 1.5 million tourists. So there's a huge gap. There's a huge loss um, that everybody's expecting to continue to have through 2022. So it's really important we stabilize our economy and lay the groundwork for economic recovery and help bring the jobs back. And uh, specifically within the tourism industry that has been around for almost 60 years. Well, let's, so, let's go now, Mary, to one, one of the businesses obviously directly affected by that and trying to get back to what would be considered, you know, I, I hate using the phrase business as usual because, you know, nothing nothing's as usual anymore. But uh, Mr. Ogan down at uh, Valley the Ladia, uh, uh, I've been been able, I've been very, very fortunate to actually take a tour of your facilities uh, when the world was normal. Uh, there's so many people and it requires like so many moving parts just to get that operation, um, you know, up and running at a normal pace and everything like that. What is the last year and a half 
been for you at trying to you know accommodate uh, tour packs and and just to be able to run at a somewhat normal level when you know there's been so many restrictions uh, it's very difficult and it's very hard uh, not only by uh, of myself but my uh, other partners uh, we thank the federal government for some of the support and everything but that's for the past year and a half and it's not that much but at least it's more than zero but we're looking at the future and uh, you know ever since it closed Taking care of the animals is a daily thing, and uh, you know, doing that 24/7, uh, and no income coming in is like, uh, who wants to, uh, you know, when you apply for credit, they look at your credit and say, oh, you you're making 70% and you only got 30% uh, debt. That's good, but when you're operating a business and you're losing 70% and you're only gaining 30%, that's not real good. Uh, just to come just recently, I won't ne- mention uh, the hotel, but uh, I have worked for that hotel for 14 years. And since they shut down, I haven't uh, uh, gone back to work. So now they call me and say, hey, would I keep to come back to work? And I said, ah, it's going to be difficult because all the employees I had are no longer employed with me. And, you know, anybody can operate a, an ice cream machine. But not everybody can operate a real life caravan and to have the tourists uh, get on it and for all the safety factors and everything uh, makes it more difficult. So, you know, that's that's what's going to happen to our tourism uh, industry is when we start losing those employees and then to come back is going to cost more. And look at the prices that we have now in our community, you know, uh, with the shipment all being uh, blocked and uh, held back and everything, the prices of the commodities are high and, you know, people need to make money and that's their daily life and that's their sustenance to live a normal life, normal per se without this COVID. But, uh, you know, down there in the valley, uh, we're struggling. We are struggling. And, you know, it's a commitment that we uh, place upon ourselves that, you know, it's the culture, and if we don't continue to uh, maintain it at the minimum, uh, then we're going to lose it. And uh, the Valley of the Latte is a real life museum, you mm-hmm. know, and it's going to be difficult to come back and train those people that we used to have, and then we can get another new people and, and retrain them. It's going to make it uh, quite expensive, and then the price of the the mission fee is going to go up because business needs to recover. That's a very good point, Mr. Uggen. I would li- I'd like to uh, shift over to Steve now because Steve, you're in a semi, um, uh, you know, so- somewhat in uh, uh, similar. That's the word I'm looking for. Sem- semi similar um, line of business because at Lupang Beach Club, you guys rely on um, uh, appointments and these tour packs that you have, and you know, you've got employees that you've been able to train and be familiar with. Um, you know the the workflow and like things like that and everything like that so as long as i've known you you've always been someone who's really good at being creative when things get tough but how have you actually had to kind of manipulate and navigate these waters and everything like that with things uncertain from day to day you know i, I appreciate the question and i can maybe say that this uh, example that i'll give you common to almost all of the uh, tour attractions that are currently uh, not open at the time so obviously, uh, if we we were contemplating opening in in a bit of a degree, but we were monitoring and um, local reservations would be two or four a day, maybe a few on the on the weekend. So, as uh, as Jay was uh, mentioning, it's it's just cost prohibitive to open and and have a plan that you're going to make it to the finish line right now. Um, so how have we been able to survive? Uh, well, actually what we've been able to do is, um, uh, live off of all that we've saved over the last 35 years. Mm. So, um, uh, we started, uh, in, uh, 1986, uh, soft opening. And then in 87, we opened for regular tours and we've been very careful. I mean, our, our industry, especially Marine sports, I can tell you how many companies have come and gone, 
but we've been able to, with a careful financial management plan, uh, squirrel away for a, a hard time just in case. Well, we never thought a hard time this much. So, you know, the, the acorns are diminishing, let's put it that way. Yeah. And so 35 years of, of being careful is, is paid off in a sense that we're holding on uh, as well as some others, but unfortunately others have not. And um, it still wouldn't have been possible without the, uh, the uh, government uh, assistance and especially with the, the program that's uh, coming up now with the, um, with the LEAP program and what's going to happen with the uh, legislature, what we're anticipating is I, I still have a, a strong faith that, you know, Team Guam is going to pull through. And we said maybe 75 million would be great. You know, um, the landscape changes. And so if $50 million was appropriated first, um, and as that was being uh, rolled out, uh, another assessment could be ongoing to see who else would be in the particular need. I think that the program is going to address those who are most needy. And so uh, going back to our industry, uh, when we looked at personal situations, we said, you know what, every business on Guam is important. Every business is, is uh, a vital link into being part of the tourist attraction. So you may be a little souvenir store across the street from one of the hotels, but you're not down in Tumon because of mainly local traffic, right? Uh, but you do hire locals in your in your um, in your souvenir store, and that helps the economy go around. So um, right now, how are we working? Many of our employees have taken temporary jobs uh, elsewhere uh, in the meantime, uh, but they've been loyal to the industry. I want to I want to bring up a point is. You know, Guam has an incredible safety record, probably one of the best in the world or the best in the world with safety with marine sports. You know, uh, and that's uh, that's due to basically the staff that has been groomed and worked in the marine sports industry over the last 30 years. If you if you think about it, uh, the number of uh, accidents and and drownings even over the years are in the in the very low, barely, barely, I don't, they don't ever break into a double digit in a year. It's only a few and those people may have had a heart attack in water. That's because our employees have all this institutional experience of being in the water that they can, they can anticipate and they know what's going to happen before it happens. Um, and that's been a, a great asset to the island. We, we really need to make sure that we can protect and keep those types of employees in our industry as uh uh, John was saying that, you know, it's going to be hard to train somebody new who didn't come up with that uh, kind of background that it became instinctive. And so uh, we're just we're just really optimistic still because throughout this whole process, uh, Guam has been a very, uh, I would say, we have our different opinions, but I think we've been united as Team Guam and, uh, and we've come a long way, especially with this program that has, uh, has evolved in, in 30 days. Um, I want to also thank GBB who, who um, uh, really put together a seminar with us to, to hear what we wanted to say as, um, as advocates for everyone. We weren't, we weren't um, tied to a, a particular organization, etc. We just were citizens at large at first. We wanted to work through the uh, organizations um, that, are, that we have, whether it's GHRA, GBB, uh, Chamber of Commerce to get their opinions, but in reality, we, we all knew together that we wanted to be very uh, nonpartisan uh, and just laser focused on on having something to come through. And I think that everybody uh, held held on to that that this item was something that was singularly uh, important. Uh, although there may be other things, and I just really appreciate the warp speed that it was understood and and put together and is now funded it's just really a glimmer of hope it, this may sound kind of goofy but you know i i, I like silly movies and i like um, dumb and dumber and uh the reason why i put that up there is when he asked what are the chances with the young lady she said one in a million yep. and that was enough for him to hold on to that glimmer of hope now we have a much better chance than that and so I really, really, really um, uh, thank Team Guam, you know, everybody. One in a million for, is still a probability that it may happen. So, I mean, there, 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 is, there is that optimism that you can cling on to. So uh, well, maybe let's wrap up by bringing on uh, Mary and Jay one more time. Um, from a macro perspective, guys, um, 
Jay has even said, you know, it's a good start. Um, this is something we can work with. Mary was even saying, you know, like 75 million was the original ask. You basically got a third of that. I mean, that's not great, but it is something, you know, we'll, t we'll take what we can get, hopefully. And then now that you said um, uh, Senator Shelton introduced that other bill that will provide another 25, so that brings it up to 50. Um, where do we go from here, and um, how do we implement this, and how do we get started? Oh, uh, you're muted, Jay. As Mary was saying, there's going to be a series of stakeholder meetings that Gita is going to uh, convene in this next week or so that we hope will uh, provide some guidance as to how the benefits will actually be administered. Uh, and then the legislature itself is going to be holding a public hearing uh, to talk about supplementing the governor's uh, 25 million with uh, hopefully more than 25 million to bring it up to the original 75. And all this is going to require that there be a public hearing and then that public hearing, uh, all of the purposes and, and ideas that have gone into creation of the program need to be vetted with the community so they understand exactly what is going on. And I think it's important to say that this is not simply uh, single organizations or, or, or individual businesses, as uh, Steve has said, it really is a team Guam effort where we've gotten all of the community together to indicate to the senators and to the governor that unless we save this particular part of our industry, those people that have been hurt the most, regardless if they're directly involved in tourism or not, then we're gonna be losing the core of our existing business community and that's going to make it that much harder for us to rebound and uh, provide the services that uh, we all need to be able to provide it in order to make uh, uh, make Guam recover as quickly as we can. All right, very well. Thank you, Jay. And uh, Mary, we'd like to give you the uh, the final word with some parting shots on, on this latest effort to help small businesses who continue to struggle. But as Steve very effectively said, you know, hope springs eternal. Yeah, it's definitely one of several strategies, right? And it was really important um, to get this going quickly. Uh, which Steve alluded to because, you know, the federal dollars have already been exhausted uh, with regards to what's already been given out. But it's always um, it's always great to hear that Gita is constantly looking at additional programs. And I believe um, Director De La Sola at DOL also chimed in on the program that he was wanting to um, fund as well with the uh, paying of the minimum wage um, and sub subsidizing that, right, with the employers. And so I think that um, really collectively, again, everybody just worked together on this and everybody saw the need, the great need um, to help people get through the end of this year and the beginning of next year. So I think the timing is extremely important, uh, especially if we're going to continue to promote Guam as a safe destination. I think that promoting even WTTC safe travels um, really externally to our markets, especially as Korea it has already, um, they're not doing quarantine on the return. And, you know, as vaccinations increase with Korea and Japan, um, you know, in those markets, um, they're, they're really moving quickly through their vaccination rates. And so um, there's a lot ahead, even with President Biden's announcement with regards to travel um, for international travelers into the uh, U.S. market. And so there's a lot of things that um, you know GDB and GHRA have continued to work together on with the recovery task force, but just a lot of things that have been in, in works for some time. And so I think that from a macro point of view, all of those things have to really start coming together. Um, but the point of LEAP and the other programs, um, other appropriations that uh, was really put together so quickly here is again, to allow the businesses to survive in the next, you know, six to 12 months, as we're continuing to try to rebuild tourism and rebuild our markets, um, understanding what, uh, you know, our challenges are with our regional partners. Um, so there are a lot of agents and transportation companies and wholesalers and, and travel agents that continue to give us a glimmer of hope with what the markets would entail, also the airlines. And so I think that those, it's really important to send those messages out that, you know, Guam is doing what we need to do in order to continue to preserve um, the businesses that make up a destination, but also continue to employ people here um, that will continue to ensure its safety and resiliency as we move forward to be competitive in our region.
Oh, okay. And uh, yes, yes, Mr. Ogan. Yeah, I'd just like to uh, uh, do a shout out to our legislatures, senators, that, uh, you know, it, it's going to be a domino effect if the support is not provided to our community. Because if an employee is unable to, to be employed, then everything falls down on the ground, the debts cannot be paid, you know, they're going to be, they're going to be in a very uh, hardship uh, situation. So we just want to thank everybody that supported this uh, opportunity that's given out to support the community and uh, we are uh, requesting all our senators to support this uh, if a bill, uh, such bill comes about because it's for the community. Yes, the business is business, but with all its employees and those employees are the people of Guam, Tautau Tau Tau then, you know, we're going to have a hard time making a full recovery or a semi civil recovery because it affects everybody on the island. And thank you, uh, Jason and the Lake, for uh, this opportunity opportunity to voice our concern. All right, and thank you very much. Right on, Uncle John, you got it. Yeah, and so uh, just to wrap, we've mentioned Chris many times in the show. You know, like uh, Inafa Malik also extends to you know to the business sector as well. It's you know we take care of our neighbors. You know, technically two companies may be competitors and everything, but by no means does one want to put the other one out in the street. We all work together. We all benefit. So, thank you, Mary. Thank you, Mr. Uggen. Steve, thank you very much. Thank you, Jay. Mary. Appreciate it, boss. Thank you, Chris. Thanks, everyone. Yes, Thank uh, you, Jason. Thank okay. you, Chris. Right on. All right. Great okay. talk, guys. There you go. Thanks, thanks a lot. We appreciate it. All right, 9.30. Let's take a quick break, and we're coming back with the University of Guam. Uh, they're doing a big research project on Pacific Islanders and COVID, and they need some volunteers. Okay, it's 9.30. Also, before we end the show, uh, we are going to give you a chance to win pizza with our Pepsi Ultimate Pizza Trivia Challenge up for grabs this morning. Pizza, pizza. <laughs> Little have, you, have you got your toga ready? <laughs> Uh, my toga is always ready. Well, if it, yeah, put that thing on because we're going to Little Caesars. Right on. It's 931. The show continues next. Good morning. Get yourself all caught up with the week's KUAM News in partnership with the Guam Visitors Bureau brings you the Guam Safe and WTTC Safe Travel Certified Program Showcase. Look out for this powerful symbol for visitors, island residents, and industry workers alike as it represents establishments with a consistent global commitment to safety practices. Stamped with approval by the Guam Visitors Bureau and the World Travel Tourism Council. Every Monday on KUAM News will feature a different local business who's taken the Safe Guam and Safe Travels pledge to maintain health and safety standards to get 